So first, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak. It's great pleasure. And also, I want to thank the audience to stay here after many talks. So my talk is basically an expository on about a moduli space of Calabria manifolds from the viewpoint of mirror symmetry. So when I, when I submitted this title, I wasn't sure what to talk about to the audience with a different background. But so the, the title is quite flexible, but I, it turned out it's not that misleading. So uh, let me begin with uh, an introduction. On, as Professor Tian already talked about, the, on, uh, a Calabria manifold is a compact Kela manifold such that the canonical boundary is trivial. Equivalently, this is a Ricci flat Kela manifold by the famous Yao's theorem. And in dimension one, it's just an elliptic curve. And in dimension two, it's K3 surfaces and Abelian surfaces. And in higher dimension, there are many topological types. So it's basically a generalization of an elliptic curve. And I want to fix some notation. So by the Calabria condition, it carries a holomorphic volume form, which is a section, a global section of the top on wedge of the cotangent bundle. It's a, on a nowhere vanishing holomorphic volume form. And also it's a Kähler manifold. It carries a Kähler class, which belongs to H on 1, 1, 1 on X. It's a real part. But often we consider complexification of the Kähler class as well. So it's called a co complexified Kähler form. That is an element of H11, such a way that the imaginary part is on Kähler form. The real part can be anything. So Calabria manifold is, uh, uh, by definition, it's a Kähler manifold. So recall that Kähler manifold has uh, three structures in a compatible way. It's, it's a complex manifold, of course, and a Riemannian manifold, and a symplectic manifold in a compatible way. And two of them determine the last one. So basically, there are two structures, two moduli spaces. And uh, in, in this talk, I wanted to focus on two moduli spaces. One is moduli space of complex structure. The other is moduli space of Kela structure. This is a little bit on abuse of language because on, in fact, I, I talked about on moduli of a symplectic structure. On, but in, in our field, we, we call it a moduli of Kela structure. So when I say moduli of Kela structure, I fix the complex structure and vary the symplectic structure. Okay. So there are two moduli spaces. And in the last three decades, I think the main motivation to study Calabria manifolds come from mirror symmetry, which is a conjecture inspired by string theory. So the conjecture roughly claims that given any Calabria manifold, there exists another Calabria manifold, say x and y, called, the y is called mirror manifold of x, such that on symplectic geometry of the initial Calabria manifold x, is equivalent to the complex geometry of another Calabria Y, mirror partner, and vice versa. And of course, you have to make sense of uh, this equivalence. And there are many formulations. And for example, Konchevich's on homological mirror symmetry on Strominger, Yao, Zaslow's uh, <coughs> dual integrable system on formulation, and many others, depending on the situation. And one, one concrete example first studied by physicists is on quintic threefold. So it claims that, uh, well, roughly claims that the quantum cohomology of a quintic hypersurface in CP4 is equivalent or contains almost the same information as Hodge theory or period integral of a mirror manifold Y. And if you haven't seen mirror symmetry on it before, this is just on a, one, on a distribution of Calabria freefalls in toric on manifolds and some plus alpha. And you see the striking symmetry along the vertical axis. And I want to explain what the vertical axis and horizontal axis on, uh, represent, but the, on, uh, this, this indicates that the dimension of uh, complex moduli space of X is the same as the dimension of the Kela moduli space of Y for a mirror pair of Calabria manifold. But this is actually a trivial consequence of this equivalence because if you have a two equivalent geometry, then the moduli space of these geometry should be the same. 
in particular, the, mod the dimension of the moduli should be the same. So this is just an, an uh, easy consequence, um, just the equality of numbers. But in this talk, I wanted to um, look at a refined structure of the moduli space, not only numbers, not only dimension, but the structure. Okay, so the, on today's talk, I wanted to um, see two moduli, or compare the um, moduli space of complex structure and Kela structure. Okay, and in light of the mirror duality of Calabria manifolds, Sorry. In light of the mirror on the duality of Calabria manifold, we expect that there should be sort of parallel theory between these two moduli spaces. And especially the complex moduli space have been studied on quite well, and we know that it has a rich structure, and we, we expect on the latter space is also rich. And probably another motivation to study the moduli of Calabria is that it's a basic principle that uh, on sort of a moduli space is nice if the, on the, the object, its parameters is nice. So it, uh, the moduli sort of inherits the structure of the object. And I, I think this is true in daily life too. So you should behave well in front of your kids. Okay, so on. Okay, so they on. I want to begin with uh, on some review of uh, on complex structure of the moduli space. On um, so the okay, so the uh, moduli space of complex structure has a long history of study, initiated by Riemann on who first studied the moduli of Riemann surfaces, one one dimensional. Uh, complex, uh, complex manifold, and later on um, Kodaira and Spencer, who studied the first deformation of uh, complex manifold in a high, high dimension. And then Kuranishi, who studied on, uh, who sort of, sort of showed the uh, existence of the versatile deformation space of uh, complex manifold. And so the uh, prototype of the moduli or complex moduli space of the compact ma complex manifold is Riemann, Riemann surfaces. The genus G Riemann surfaces has a moduli of, I mean, uh, the, the moduli of the genus G Riemann surfaces is a complex manifold of dimension 3G minus 3, and it is natural, I mean, it naturally equipped with a nice metric quarter on a very Peterson metric. So it's very nice and as, as nice as possible. And Calabia uh, manifold has their similar um, properties. So Calabia uh, manifolds are particularly nice because of the uh, uh, this theorem by Bogomolovsky and Tolo claiming that assuming on uh, the uh, this vanishing of Kohomol, this basically means there is no uh, continuous on uh, they form a continuous automorphism. On then the complex moduli of the Calabria manifold is a smooth complex manifold or O before of dimension on H1 of the tangent bundle. Mm. More, more on precisely, the, the on, uh, deformation is uh, on unobstructed. So the space is on a nice because of this theorem. And if you have a nice space, Probably in, moth uh, in modern mathematics, if you want to just study on space, you, you often consider nice functions on it, like more theory. And what functions are there? On, uh, sir, for for Calabria manifold, say n, n dimensional, you can fix the cycle of the middle on a homology cluster. It's a two n dimensional a real manifold. Calabria is two n dimensional and ha fix a half dimensional cycle and consider on this sort of function. So just integrate the on uh, holomorphic volume form, which is unique up to uh, multiplication by constant, and integrate that over the fixed on uh, cycle, where the denominator is just a sort of on uh, normalization, because the, uh, this holomorphic volume form is unique up to, only, only up to uh, multiplication by constant. And, uh, uh, it's shown that the, on, if z in the moduli, this point is on a stationary point on, with no non-vanishing on value, then it, it gives a minimizer of this function, and it satisfies what's called Moore's attractive equation given by this form. 
three, this represents the foreign color dual of gamma, and that is this, uh, equal to the real part of the uh, holomorphic volume for uh, up to some constant. And uh, okay, so uh, the, the corresponding color dual anifold uh, corresponding to that uh, moduli point Z is called uh, an attractor or attractive uh, color dual manifold. The name suggests uh, the you know the you want you, you're tempted to study the, the, this calabial. So the typical example of uh, on such calabial uh, on so in the Abelian case, the on uh, attractors are uh, on Abelian attractors are just a CM type. So the attractor or attractive calabial manifolds are sort of a generalization of this Abelian variety of CM type. So by studying a moduli space, you get some information about the on uh, calabial manifold. But uh, this is not the uh, aspect or the structure I wanted to focus on today. And uh, today, I wanted to focus on the metric. Uh, so uh, just like uh, the moduli of Riemann surfaces, the moduli of Calabria manifold carries a nice metric called the value Peters metric. It's, it's a Keller, Keller metric given by uh, the following, uh, as follows. So, uh, <clears throat> The B model, V Peterson potential, I, I, I use B because uh, in mirror symmetry uh, community, we use B for uh, complex geometry and A for uh, symplectic or Keller geometry. And I'm gonna use A later. So anyway, so uh, the B model, V Peterson geometry, that, that's just, just a classical one. The, the v, v Peterson, it's a Keller manifold, so it should uh, comes from a Keller potential. So the Peters and potential is a potential that gives a metric. So anyway, the potential is uh, on a for local on a holomorphic family of volume, holomorphic volume form. It's given by this uh, expression, and I, I think the existence of the on uh, the Peters metric is classically known, but. Uh, it's, it's Professor Tian, I think, uh, the who first uh, write down this ex explicit uh, potential. It's uh, quite useful in practice. But I, I, today I wanted to uh, rewrite this uh, potential uh, as follows. So if there exists a uh, basis consisting of Lagrangian, well, formal sum of Lagrangians, and consider on uh, sort of on uh, with a pairing in a Fukaya category, or this is just on uh, intersection of uh, well signed intersection of uh, Lagrangians, and you take the inverse matrix of that uh, on uh, on intersection matrix, and you can rewrite the potential as on uh, this. Okay, so it's not a guarantee that you can always take a Lagrangian representative of on a basis here, but in, in good situation, you can rewrite the uh, potential as follows. And I'm gonna use this uh, as sort of guiding principle later, so I label this uh, by on one. So for example, if you consider a family of elliptic curves, so that the, the fiber over on upper half space, on a, <coughs> where the fiber of a tau is just a standard elliptic curve, then by, by definition, you can compute the uh, potential as follows, and it's, it gives rise to the uh, Poincaré metric on the uh, upper half space. And uh, for example, if you consider a uh, suitably polarized or lattice polarized K3 surface, the, the moduli is your symmetric domain of type four, and the, the Peters metric on uh, defining this way is nothing but the classical Bergman metric. So it's a sort of generalization of the classical nice metric. So by Lagrangian basis, you mean uh, this uh, pair line and Lagrangian submanifold? Uh, That's correct. Basis. Yeah. But is it can be. Clear, this, uh, this, uh, it's it's category, this intersection is uh, Sorry, intersection, sir. This uh, chi. Yeah. Metrics is that clear? Is that easy to see? Oh, this is just an alternating sum of layer homology of this. Invertibility. Sorry? Invertibility. Oh, invertibility. On invertibility on, let's see. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, from, from the mirror on a symmetry point of view, it's, it's a trivial, but I, I, I can't directly see the invertibility. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Let me, yeah. 
Maybe, maybe not, not this time, but yeah. Sure. It, it should follow, yeah. OK, so, on, uh, so, uh, so far I, I talked about the on, uh, moduli, I mean, smooth part of the moduli space. And I think the more interesting and more exotic around the boundary of the complex moduli space. And for example, there, there are many topics on it to talk about, uh, geometric transitions. And uh, mirror, uh, also, mirror symmetry is about the uh, boundary of the moduli space, too. And many, many things to talk about. But now, let's turn to the uh, Keller moduli space and see what structure we see. OK. So uh, the moduli of the Keller structure, the, the Ke which I call Keller moduli, for example, the Keller moduli space is much harder to study, and it's, it's related to on a GIT and a symplectic quotient. So for example, if your symplectic manifold is realized as symplectic quotient, you can vary the symplectic structure by changing the level set of the moment mapping. But uh, it's not true that you can always have such a description, or it may not be intrinsic. And here, even here, on our guiding principle is, again, mirror symmetry. Mirror symmetry tells us, I mean, mirror symmetry does not really distinguish by rational Calabian manifolds. Moreover, it tells us that the uh, complexified Keller cone or Keller cone of birational Calabian manifolds give local chart of the uh, Keller moduli spaces. And moreover, we need to we sometimes need to consider a uh, derived equivalent Calabian manifold as well. So x x and y may not be directly geometrically related. So the picture is like this. Birational Calabian, which are related by flops, on uh, Keller cone can be adjacent. But on uh, derived equivalent, we don't know the relation between these. There may not be non-geometric phase. And, and there, there is an on, on example giving us such a uh, picture called Paffian, Grassmann, Calabial manifolds. And a physicist on uh, Hori and Tong used the gauge linear sigma model. <coughs> to show that they are really uh, connected in a physical phase space. But mathematically, uh, we don't know how, how we can uh, glue this local chart. So that's sort of motivation. So this indicates that we need to consider a sort of category uh, to really define a Kela moduli of a Kela structure. So let me introduce uh, the space of stability condition. This seems a little bit uh, scary, but it's not that much. So uh, a stability condition on a triangulated category D consists of uh, a pair. It's a group homomorphism from growth and D group of a category to complex number. It's called central charge. And uh, sort of collection of full additive subcategories parameterized by real number on phi here of D. And they're called semi-stable objects. And that satisfies certain uh, axioms. The first axiom says that any stable, sorry, semi-stable object which, which is non-zero, then the value of this on uh, Z lies in the uh, phase phi on uh, line. And the second is the sort of compatibility of this uh, on a collection of uh, on subcategories and a triangle structure on the category. The last one is harder nourishment fan filtration. That basically says that any object in a triangle category is an iterated extension of these semi-stable objects. Some sort of uh, compatibility condition. That's not that important. And we consider the set of such stability condition on a fixed on a triangulated category, and we denote it stub D. And it turned out it's basically Brichon theorem. On it's it is naturally a complex on a manifold, which is locally modeled on this vector space via the forgetful map. So it's a pair, and by forgetting the on a second on. Uh, part you get a map, and uh, by by this uh, uh, forgetful map, you you see that the, it's it's a uh, really a complex manifold. Okay, so it's just on uh, a recipe to construct a complex manifold out of a category. And uh, uh, 
claim or conjecture is that for Calabria manifold X, there exists an embedding of the Kähler moduli space into the double quotient. So uh, stab is a set of stability condition, and there is a natural action of autoequivalence of the category. And also, you can rotate the on um, this on um, sorry on um, central charge on um, this uh, semi-stable object just to reparameterize on um, these things. So you can, you can take on um, this quotient, and um, there the conjecture there exists an embedding of on um, killer moduli where the, the triangular category we consider is the derived category of a coherent sheaf of X. So basically, there are two steps. Given the Calabria manifold X, you consider a category of sort of vector bundles over X, and using that recipe, you construct a complex manifold. And that complex manifold gives a sort of ambient, ambient space of your Kähler moduli space. So instead of working on this we can work on a, on a better space, better ambient space. So STAB is sort of an extended version of the Kähler moduli space. It's similar to the on a small, small and a big, I mean, relation between small and big quantum cohomology. So we, we, we can study this uh, space as a sort of a substitute of the on Kähler moduli space. Okay, so for example, I, and in the beginning, I explained uh, uh, attractor geometry on the moduli space of the complex structure. And you can write down uh, on the mirror analog or Keller analog of that attractor geometry. And attractor equation, and uh, considered in this bigger space, ambient space instead of this, uh, uh, is uh, uh, given by this, uh, for example. Of course, still, there is still a uh, gap between this and uh, space we want on the ambient space, but this has a nice sort of global coordinate and uh, easier to work on. Okay, so let's turn to the on metric on perspective. So the V Peters metric we on studied on, on the complex moduli can be translated to the on Kähler moduli. So recall, well, maybe you forget already, but using the on equation, we, we rewrite the on they appear some potential given by Professor Tian to some on Lagrangian on language, and you can on, you can sort of replace everything on in in the equation one by mirror object. So that's a sort of a, a motivation, a guiding principle of our definition, and this is well defined, of course. And so, given a stability condition, you consider on a sort of a function of this sort. And where, instead of Lagrangians, we consider some of the basis of the uh, k-group of the uh, category, and consider order pairing of the uh, category, and take inverse uh, matrix of that one. And uh, so this, so if it, uh, x is a compact and Calabiao, this is symmetric, and it has an inverse. So this is well well defined. Okay. So that, that's an analog of the Han pairing on the Gaia category. So and we call it the A model V Peterson potential. And the, it, it is, the, and I, I cheat a little bit, but it is defined on a suitable subset of the stability condition. For example, we wanted this on part to be on positive because I wanted to take a log of that one. So there, there are some uh, conditions like uh, Riemann's uh, bilinear relation. Uh, there, there's some condition to cut out some suitable subspace. But what you can check is that the uh, Hessian, the complex Hessian of this function is well defined on the double quotient of this uh, sort. Okay, so, uh, uh, so uh, it, it's not clear that the, uh, this is independent of choice of uh, I mean, it's invariant under on auto equivalence and things. Okay, so but the problem is on this is well defined, but it it's not necessarily a given metric. It's on often on degenerate. The the thing is because I, I I define a sort of a metric on the bigger space, not this on space we want to really study. So the metric is on. I mean, there's no guarantee that there's a uh, nice metric. It's, it's uh, often uh, degenerate. But, 
Sorry? So I guess dimension is basically sure, yes. bigger. Typically it's bigger, yes. And but this degenerate property, it, at first sight it's uh, disappointing, but it turned out to be useful later. Okay, so on, I, I wanted, uh, sorry. So I wanted to give her the simplest example, of course. And the simplest example is an elliptic curve, which is well studied. And it's, uh, if you compute the uh, stability space of the elliptic curve, then the, this double quotient can be identified as a uh, nice uh, space. And uh, central charge is given by this form. It's a sort of well-known well one. And the Grutan D group of the uh, category has a nice, nice basis given by structure shift and skyscraper shift. And uh, following the definition, you can compute the potential to get this one. So the metric uh, we get in the end is a nice Poincaré metric. So it's sort of a uh, nice I mean, uh, indication that we are in a good direction. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is a uh, non-trivial non, I mean, non example. Let A be on a self-product of an elliptic curve. Then there, uh, there is an identification of the uh, double quotient of the stability space on this Ziegel on modular variety. And moreover, the variable symmetric we define on this space is identified with the classical Bergman metric on the, on the right-hand side. So the point of the theorem is on, well, there, there are two parts. First, we, we need to identify the on the space with this one. This is basically on Britchen's work. We, we closely on follow on his, his work. And the main point is just identification of this on metric. So in that case, on this embedding is really isomorphism and nice. And uh, there are a few remarks to make. On, so first, on, we consider on self-product of elliptic, which seems a, a sort of trivial, trivial thing, but it turns out to be not. The complex structure of this is one-dimensional, and the same as the elliptic curve, but the Keller structure is different. It's, it's three-dimensional, so it's, it's non-trivial. And this is compatible with the mirror symmetric on observation, too, which I skip. And uh, let, uh, what about quintic threefold? The, uh, the existence of a stability condition for quintic, uh, it's not been proven, but conjecturally, it, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's given by the central charge, where uh, uh, this Q is, uh, sorry, maybe I should explain it. We consider a uh, complexified color, color parameter tau H, where tau H is a polarization, tau is uh, an element in the upper half space, and Q is uh, an exponential of that, and N is uh, on Gromov-Witten invariant of X, then the central charge is given by this. And if you compute the potential, you get this, uh, asymptotically it's uh, on given in this form. And this is nothing but the uh, sort of deformation of the Poincaré metric on the upper half space, especially on when, when Q is sufficiently small, it's non-degenerate. And uh, actually, the uh, sort of metric uh, aspect of Keller moduli space has been studied by uh, Pelham Wilson before, before Bridgeland introduced uh, the space of stability conditions. So he, he doesn't know about the bridge, and, I mean, uh, there's no way, but uh, it, it's in this sort of direction, a uh, research direction that was initiated by Pelham Wilson. Okay, so uh, lastly, I want to mention on uh, conjecture, refining Bridgeland's original conjecture. So uh, there exists an embedding of the Keller moduli space into this a little bit smaller space. And uh, often our metric is uh, uh, degenerate. It doesn't really give you a metric. But you can pull back the potential to the uh, moduli space, and it, it's non it, It's a, I mean, it's conjecture that uh, it's, uh, gives the uh, gives a Keller uh, metric. Moreover, this is compatible with mirror symmetry in the sense that on uh, under mirror symmetry, the uh, metric here and uh, classical V-Peter symmetry can be identified. So, 
we don't know the definition of this uh, on Keller moduli space, but you can make use of the degeneracy condition of our metric to sort of get information about this embedding. This is uh, sort of one application of our work. And that's the end. Thank you very much.